Hello again and welcome back to my kitchen. Um, I'm going to do something I've been talking about. I'm actually been doing it, but I'm going to put it on uh, the camera this time. I'm going to can some chicken. Now, a little store close to me had boneless, skinless thighs, $1.25 a pound, and boneless, skinless breasts, $1.25 a pound. So, that was a wonderful deal. So, the thighs have a whole lot of fat and mess on them. But I have been probably an hour and a half cleaning up the, the meat, cutting it in hunks, and I'm going to show you what I'm doing. I have um, I've brought some of these disposable pans like this, and I've got, this is waiting to go in the oven. I'm going to par-cook it for about 30 minutes. You just want it to start kind of getting opaque a little bit. And then over here, I hope you can see, I've got some that I uh, just took out of the oven. Some of it's darker, cooked a little more than the other, but that's going to take Linda over at Linda's Pantry is who helped me to learn about this. And it takes the, uh, that old stinking chicken smell out of it. I tried it last week. I canned some, and there's no comparison to the when I would do it raw pack and when I partially cooked it. And I'm going to make a broth. When I raw pack, I don't put anything but salt in it. But because I'm partially cooking it and it won't have as much liquid, I'm going to make a broth. I'm going to use uh, some better than bouillon and uh, according to the directions on it, and then I'm going to taste it and I might have to change the flavor a little bit, add a little more, but I'm going to make my own broth to put over the meat, then I'm going to can it in quart jars at 10 pounds of pressure for 90 minutes. That's what I have to do for my altitude. So when you're canning uh, in the pressure canner, like that, you do not have to uh, per se sterilize your jars like you do if you're just going to a water bath can because the heat in the pressure canner gets so high that it kills any germs. So what I do is I wash them in hot soapy water and then I put them on a cookie sheet and rinse them of course and I put them on a cookie sheet in the oven at about 200 degrees to keep them warm and then I pack my warm chicken and my warm broth in them and I put them in the canner and can them. Now because I'm going to use bouillon today for my broth, I am not uh, going to add any salt to the canning process because the bouillon has salt in it. So I just wanted to show y'all the beginning. This isn't a very pretty sight, but I'll show you. I could cook this down, but I'm not. But this is what I cleaned off of those thighs and that's probably three pounds worth of stuff, but I probably will just cook it and add it to the dog's food and the cat and they'll enjoy that. But I'll be back after a while when I start getting to the next step. But I just wanted to show you, I cleaned my meat, I cut it in pieces, I've got it in these disposable pans, I've got one in the oven, one has come out, I'll get this one done and then when I bring my jars and I start jarring it back up, or when I'm making the broth, I'll, I'll give y'all an in, inside look on that. But I'll be back in a little bit with some more of this can in this good, economical, I won't call it cheap because it's plenty good meat, meat. See you in a little okay. bit. Okay, I uh, took my chicken out of the oven, and I've got it over here on the stove, and I have packed, and I packed them really tight, my jars with some dark and some white meat and it's been just par cooked for about 30 minutes and I've made my broth I use the better than bouillon and to a quart of water you use one and a half tablespoons of bouillon so I actually did two gallons and I did the great big jar like you get at Costco of the better than bouillon so I'm going to uh, start putting my broth in on the chicken And it's going to bubble in because I have, um, I've packed it pretty, pretty snug in there. And I'll get my debubbler out here in a minute. And uh, I know the pot's in the way and y'all can't see much. Let me see if I can do it like this. My jars are sterile. And they, uh, 
I washed them in hot soapy water and they will um, be, you know, there's enough heat in the pressure pot to completely sterilize anything that would be in them. Now they also say that you don't have to put your lids in hot water to get that rubber gasket soft, but I still do that. It's just, it's always worked. So, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm going to get these seven ready to go in, and then I'm going to get the next seven ready for my other cooker. And I'll get them going. I have to pressure them at 10 pounds for uh, 90 minutes. And if you're pressure canning and uh, you step away and you don't uh, realize that you're, put this hot water on my lids here, and you don't realize that your pressure has dropped below 10, according to the ball book, you're supposed to start your time over. So, you know, it's real important to pay attention to what you're doing and pay attention to your canner and pick a time that you can definitely be dedicated to watching your gauges because you definitely want it to pressure and not have to start over. So I pretty well get me a chair and I, I pretty well sit close to the stove. I don't want to take any chances. Now when I get these down to where I have an inch of headspace, I'm having to take some of my juice out. I'm going to um, use my vinegar uh, on a paper towel and wipe around the top of the rims where they will um, they'll seal. I don't have to worry about them having any oil or anything on them from my hand or the chicken. Okay, that looks about right right there. So let me get my paper towel. I just dip it in the vinegar and then I wipe it around the rim to make sure there's nothing on this rim that's going to keep it from sealing. And I feel around the rim with my hand, other hand, to be sure that I haven't missed a crack or a chip. I, I just now had to put one jar aside because down where the, the rings where the, the lid screw on had a chip, but I wasn't taking any chances on that. Let me see, where did I put my, where did I put my little lid grabber? I don't know, so I guess I'll use a fork. Get my lids out of here. Get them on. I just have a Presto canner. And this is all I've ever had. I'd love to have one of the All-Americans. But I can't see my way to getting one right now. So I'll just use what I've used for many years. And that's my little Prestos that holds seven quarts. Or I can stack pints up in it. Okay, there's those. Let me get the rings. You just put them on fingertip tight. Oh, I'm proud of this chicken. It's such a good feeling to know that I'll have plenty to do me for a while. Good, good, good. Because those those grandkids can say, Nana, can you make some chicken and rice? Or, Nana, can you fix us some dumplings? Or, can we have chicken spaghetti? And I've got my chicken already cooked. So that's just a wonderful deal to have in my pantry. Okay, I'm ready to start putting them into this cooker. They're warm and the water is warm. I'm not boiling the water yet. I'm just going to... Um, Put my jars down in there. I'm having terrible trouble with my internet. If, if y'all watch this and then one day there's not one, you'll know I can't 
I'm having trouble getting it to where I can upload my videos. I don't know what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to lean this camera over there and see if y'all can see. I've got them all down in there. See? They're down in there and I am going to get them. I'm going to let it start boiling slowly and then I'll put the lid on and then you have to let it vent for 10 minutes. Then you put your weight on and watch the gauge. And when my pressure gets to about 11 pounds, I'll start timing it for 90 minutes. Now I'm going to get the other canner ready, but since you've already seen the process, I'm going to bring you back when I take it out of the canner, show you what it looks like. If you have any questions, just ask me in the comments below, and um, I'll try to answer, answer you personally about it. I've never taught a canon class, so I'm just doing it the way I do it, and I've been doing it ever since I married 49 years ago, so, well, it'll be 49 June the 6th, I can count that, can I? So, anyhow, it's worked for me, and I try to go by what the government says and what the Blue Book says, but sometimes it may vary a little bit. I'm just showing you what has worked for me and what I'm doing. You don't have to do it my way, but you do need to can you some meat. You can can beef. You can can deer meat if you have it. Anything. It's wonderful to have on the shelf and it's such a quick easy meal. If you can beef like when they put roast on sale and you buy them and you can raw pack it. Just put the raw meat in there, a teaspoon of salt to the quart, put the lid on it and you pressure it 90 minutes, you can take that out and you can make shredded and make barbecue buns out of it. You can make hash with it. You can make soup with it. There's no end to what you can do with, with the beef. And it's already cooked for you. Pot pies, it's a wonderful thing to do. So if you have it canned, you need to think about it because it sure is, well, it just makes things easier in the kitchen for you later. I'll be back in a little bit with a bunch of canned chicken to show you. I thought I would come back and show y'all my uh, pressure canners. This one has built up a little bit. See, it's got to get up to the 10 pounds. And the weight will start jiggling. This one is starting to vent. See the steam coming out? Can y'all see that? It has to do that for 10 minutes. And then I put the weight on and um, it'll start to uh, build up its pressure also. So I've got two of them going on the stove. The one on the left over here, this one will be done a little bit before that one, but that's okay by the time I get these jars out. Those will be ready to come out. So out of my chicken, I got 14 quarts in the cookers, and I have probably three pints left that I'll make chicken spaghetti or something with. But I'm real pleased with it and I'll show y'all when they come out. Okay. Come on back in the kitchen and look at my canning. I got 14 quarts of chicken and you can see it's still bubbling, bubbling, bubbling from the, from the heat. Let me see if I can get up close. See there? But every one of them have sealed and now I'll have meat that I can just pop the top off of and enjoy. I'm proud of it. It always makes you feel so satisfied when they all seal and they're pretty. They've done just what they're supposed to do. So I just want to thank y'all again for coming and visiting with me in the kitchen. It's good to have somebody in here to talk to because you have to wait 90 minutes while that stuff pressures. Well, that's an hour and a half. Make sure it stays on. It's, I do it at 12 pounds just to be safe. But uh, anyway, I'm proud of my accomplishments. But let me just tell you, this gal is tired. I have been in this kitchen all day long. So I'm fixing to go get comfortable and uh, rest a little bit. And then I'm going to go to bed and get a good night's sleep. I, they always say you sleep better if you work hard. Well, I ought to sleep like a baby tonight because I've been working today. Anyhow, 
y'all have a good evening and be sure you come back tomorrow to visit and get you a glass of tea and sit down and watch me cook.